Hey everybody, welcome to Mal and Candace Rants <laughs> Reviews on Randomness. <laughs> Candace is laughing. Hi. Oh wait, I have to flick this switch. Oh, it's not on? I'm Mal Hall and this is Candace Thompson. How's it going, Candace? Hola, I'm great. Wow. We're doing a review today. We're doing a review. We haven't done one of those since I think the Grammys. The Grammys. The Grammys. Which was right after the Super Bowl, so around the same time. Also, real quick, we've taken two weeks off. Here's why. It's because uh, we didn't like one episode that we recorded. <laughs> it, it was about... <laughs> we could tell them what it was about. It was about ghost encounters. Number one, it wasn't very funny after we got done with it. Number two, it had nothing to do with anything that was going on. In the world. In the world. And number three, it was just lame, and we don't want to do lame vlogs for you guys Stop. and then last week we were going to record one and we were like well let's just use last week's and we we're like well last week sucks so let's just not use it and then candace got sick and then i had a show so that brings us here to this exciting episode the review of oj simpson made in america on the, espn the 30, 30 for 30. 30 incredible documentary um five part documentary series all of the episodes it's 10 hours of documentary about the oj simpson hours? case yes i knew each one was an hour and a half but i can't do math very well so 10 hours so what'd i was you, like that's like four hours what what did you think like of the entire project. Oh my God. Like, first of all, they didn't even need to make that FX American Show. crime story. Yeah. This completely negated that. Like, yeah. anyone who watched this will not even remember that that show ever existed. I mean, we were so young when that happened. Yeah. You know, I was like four. <laughs> I mean, you're 24 now, so. Right. I mean, yeah. So I was like that. four. <laughs> you know, so I was like still in diapers practically <laughs> when he murdered her. To be fair to that FX show, it was a fictional, like, reenactment. This was a in depth mm -hmm. documentary of OJ Simpson. And more than that, I think the thing I liked the most was that it covered. Um, race relations in Los Angeles for the early 90s. The, I mean, for the 60s through the 90s. That entire, like, time period. A lot of stuff that I did not know. Which, which was also, I mean, so relevant because the case became so much... It became a race case. It right. literally wasn't even about murder mm -hmm. after a certain point. Yeah. So they had to cover that part, but I think they did it beautifully. It wasn't like, hey, look how guilty he is. It was, look at... These are the facts, and this is like the chronologically how things happen. But it was also like, yo, he's guilty as fuck. I mean, if you had any doubt that he did, didn't do it, or did do it from previous whatever that you had heard about the, the story, right? it's gone now. Like, there's no doubt. There's no way anyone could watch this and be like, oh, he was still innocent. I mean, there are some people that still have doubts. They're called stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> They're called idiots. Out of the five Which, parts, I mean, did you have a favorite? Did you have a favorite moment or, or moment. something that happened? Like, I'm gonna tell you, I, I really loved the last, the fifth episode. A pivotal moment for me which I felt like you just can't help but feel the anger in the black community. Well, you can feel it throughout the whole entire thing, but the one moment that for me just made it so much worse was when that teenage girl got shot in the convenience store. Oh, yeah. I did not, I did I not, see, know, I did about not that. know about that. Yeah, I didn't either. And then how... What's her name? Patricia Harden or something like that? Black girl shot in convenience store by <laughs> Korean lady. Watch it pull up 30 names. Latasha Harris, Harlins. <laughs> what did you say? First? Latasha, you said Patricia, Latasha Harden. Harlins. <laughs> you know what? I was close. Yeah, that was terrible. She looks like she was just in the convenience store trying to buy something. An argument ensued, which for me, I'm assuming, I don't know if this is correct or not, and I don't know if you got a different story, but I think the chick started, the, the woman that worked there, the Korean lady who was over the counter, started arguing with her. Maybe she thought she stole something. Right. And an argument ensued. It looked like it got a little physical. Next thing you know, the teenage girl, Latasha. Latasha turns, turns around. To leave. Bang. And the, and the woman just shoots her in the back of the head. And for that crime of killing this girl, she got six months probation. Probation. She didn't even go to jail. Six months probation. Yeah. And that led to the Watts riots. That led to the Watts riots. OJ wanted to be looked at 
wanting to be judged for him and not being black, right? Yes. A part of me feels the same way. Like, judge me for who I am. But I do know that I'm black. Right. That I think that was his problem. He didn't want to be black, and he's full black. He, he's f- <laughs> and he's full black. And he's full black. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's what's so, I think what's so ironic about the case is that black people supported this guy and fought and got him off for literally murdering somebody yeah. and he didn't want murdering anything. to somebody. Oh, yeah, that's so terrible yeah. how it really. Yeah, he murdered to two somebody. Two people, two people, and for somebody who didn't even want to be part of that community at all. Another thing that was just eye opening for me was when he surrendered, finally surrendered to the police. And they're driving out of his house. And oh, he, what says, he, said. he says to the cop, what are all these niggas doing in Brentwood? Except he said the hard ER. Hard ER. Meanwhile, they're making t-shirts, pray for OJ, yeah. free OJ. Yeah. We love you, OJ. <laughs> he did not love any, any of the black of them. people. Didn't want anything to do with black people. You know, my favorite person in the in the documentary was that old black juror. I and hate she was my least favorite. Because she was terrible. But yeah. she was... So, the reason why I... I didn't agree with her. Right. She did evoke emotions from me because I was like, what are you doing? But then she kept it real. And that's yeah. why I was like, that's why I was like, okay. She kept it real, but that mentality, the mentality of that juror number nine is ignorant. My exa- it's the exact reason why I get so mad when black people don't like me because it's that mentality. Of right course, there. it's an ignorant mentality. Yeah. But at the time, again, put yourself, imagine, imagine coming up in that time. We're literally, which is kind of like I mean, now, we where black did people come are. Up, we did come, come up, up na- in that time. We did, but we weren't. We were in San Diego. What <laughs> I does was that in. Mean? I was in Ohio. <laughs> I mean, imagine being in LA during that time, during those riots, where right. you're seeing all that happening, which is honestly not that far from what's happening right now in the in the U.S. with right. black people getting shot in the streets mm-hmm. unarmed. She was literally like, "Yeah, we convicted him, or we let we yeah. let him off. Yeah, we knew he did it. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> but was he's basically." Back. <laughs> Yeah. That was basically her attitude. <laughs> yeah, we know he did it. Like, but that was for we just sticking it to the white man. They basically let him off out of spite. Right, for, yeah. Yeah. Spite for white people. You know what? I felt terrible by the end of the third episode just because for a, a period of time in my life, I believed that he was innocent. Because I had... My, that's That case happened when I was still living with my father who's black and it was like a very... That was a proud moment for black people. It was. Even that Chappelle, the Chappelle joke about like black people celebrated too hard when OJ got off. Like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> that justice system, it burns, don't it? Yeah, like, it was like that. And watching this, I felt so dumb for like believing that. I mean, I remember, you know, when I was four mm-hmm. and I heard the verdict, like, a part of me was relieved. Right. A part of me was like, yes. Yeah. But that was because I didn't know. I mean, even from what they showed, I guess I didn't follow it. Like when they were, you know, doing the recording live from court, whatever. Right. I didn't follow mm-hmm. that. So I didn't know. I was just kind I mean, of. four year olds, you only watch that cartoons. Too. Right. So, you know, they, and they didn't have a cartoon version of the court case. Right. The defense team did what they had to do to get their client off, but I do not agree with their tactics at all. No, it was a, it was a, it was a show. It was a circus. Like they said, it was, right. there was, I, I don't know how they could sleep at night because yeah. they all, they all knew yeah. he was guilty. Mm-hmm. They knew he was they guilty. They had to know. They knew. Oh, they knew. That's why every time they ask, like, do you, they ask the one attorney that was in charge of all the blood stuff, do you believe that that blood was planted there? And he was like, you keep asking me if I believe. He's like, it's not my job to To believe. believe. I'm like, just say yes or no. (laughs) What about OJ's dad being gay? Yeah, that was a bombshell, huh? I didn't know that. I have a theory. What? In light of this Orlando shooting that just happened at that gay club mm-hmm. and finding out that that guy was a closeted homosexual. Was he? You didn't hear about that? No. Yeah, the guy who shot up was, a, well, he wasn't even closeted. He was gay. He was closeted, like, to his wife, but he went to that nightclub. He was on Grinder. He was on, oh, yeah, there was a guy, one of his lovers came out and did an interview. That's crazy. But I had already had a theory that there's a link between violence and, like, sociopathy and... 
men who are closeted homosexuals because there's rage there's a rage that's inside of them because they can't be who they truly are right. and it ends up coming out in violence now given that information and then finding out how violent OJ was towards Nicole and finding out that his father was gay and also there have been articles written and studies done about there being a gay gene meaning that it's hereditary mm-hmm. makes me think that perhaps OJ was closeted homosexual who acted out violently towards women but also something they did not discuss in the documentary was Kato Kalin remember that strange man that was just living in OJ's guest house yeah. and we don't know why right what was that about conspiracy I think so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's real creepy to watch. He's dead inside. Like, he has dead eyes. And if you look at all look of at his all pictures, th- dead eyes. From, the, from I, like, all those pictures, dead eyes. Dead eyes. I said that every time a photo, because I, I was watching some of it with Brendan. Every time yeah. they showed a photo, I was like, dead eyes. Creepy. Look at him. Dead creepy. eyes. But it's a very powerful piece of... I mean, do you call it cinema? I mean, it's a documentary, so yeah, I guess so. It's a powerful documentary. It's streaming for free on ESPN.com. You just click on watch and you'll see the whole... um, I mean, each part is there, free to watch. And I suggest you watch it. It's, It's a commitment. It's 10 hours, but... Once you turn it on, it's hard to take your eyes off of it, to you be know, honest with you. After you get finished binge-watching Game of Thrones <laughs> and Orange is the New Black, you still have about 10 hours left in your day to watch this one. It'll eventually be up on Netflix, I'm sure. All right, normally we close out with some Snapchat input, but nobody has replied to the snap, which, what? We can close out with a text message that I just received. So, my cousin Keisha... Of course, your cousin's name is Keisha. <laughs> Send me a text and a group text to me, my sister, and our cousin Chantel. That was a screenshot of her mom, my aunt, Lorraine, who posted on Facebook this. Oh, my God. (laughs) And it's it's not funny unless you... Okay, yeah, you're like, okay. Is your aunt a lesbian? No. Does she even know that that's what Pride is referring to? No. Oh, no. My aunt posted that because her last name is Pride. <laughs> and she was like, I'm happy Pride. Oh, uh, my God. Please tell me that's her profile picture. <laughs> the only way this could be even more amazing is if she was homophobic, oh, <laughs> which God, I yeah. don't think she is. But I would be so just, much better if she was. If so. she was. Aunt Lorraine, if you're watching this, <laughs> please let us know if you're homophobic or <laughs> not. <laughs> But this is why people. This is like why our moms 50. and aunts and uncles don't need to be on social media. On the interwebs. Is. There should be a se- <laughs> there should be a separate one for parents. There should be a separate Facebook for parents. Like how they have separate dating sites for yeah. older people. Just like they have separate dating sites for every portion of the society. Yeah, you're right. There should be Facebook P for parents or Facebook, Facebook O P for, for old, old people. Facebook senior citizens. Sorry, on the ring. All right, guys. Thanks for watching Mal and Candace Rants Reviews and Randomness. We are here every Wednesday. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> we try to be on YouTube. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. I'm at Jokes by Candace, And Mal is at... At Mal Hall. At Mal Hall Comedy on Snapchat. See you next week. LeBron James. All day. Who's that?